did with Austin Eddy. He's a really talented painter who had his background in animation in the, in, in the film industry. And uh, it was really interesting to talk to him about how he stopped working in the film industry and to pursue a career in fine art. He's a really interesting guy and I think it's a really fascinating interview. I hope you enjoy it. Well, a little bit. I was born um, in Berkeley, which is just across the bay from San Francisco, and um, and I lived like in the Bay Area a lot, all over the Bay. And then I moved out in Santa Cruz, uh, and then when I was in like seventh grade, we moved to Oregon actually for a year, huh. and we lived out in Sun River, Oregon, which is like out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And um, that was kind of fun. It was a weird year, but a fun year to live out in the woods. Yeah. And then. Um, and then after that, we moved to uh, this town north of Seattle called Muckleteo. Nobody's ever heard of it. Nobody's ever heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason it's there is because there's a ferry landing that goes over to Whidbey Island. Mom or dad like move around a lot for the work or something? Yeah, my mom was just my my dad was an artist, so he was a uh, he was my he did that little white piece up there like, on top of the thing. Oh wow! Little ink drawing. Yeah. He was um a sort of really well known accomplished artist in the tradition of Tonka painting from the Tibetans. Really? Yeah, so he was one of the first Westerners to learn how to do traditional Tibetan art in, in, uh, in America. My parents always encouraged me, and I always had a lot of people in my life who encouraged me as an artist. It was never like, you shouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was always like, you, you should keep going, you know? <laughs> and um, I sort of screwed off for a while in my teenage years, yeah. like everybody does, you know, and I didn't practice at all. I was just like, I didn't want to do it. And and then in my early 20s, like 19-ish, 20, I started going back to community college, like I said. And then I got a scholarship to go to the Academy of Art in San Francisco, and um, which was cool. But, uh, you know, by that point, I was sort of like, um, I was not into doing fine art. I was like, I was sort of felt like it would be, you know, economically irresponsible of myself. Yeah. To, <laughs> to How'd you think that? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it might be economically irresponsible to follow fine art as a career. Yeah. Just say it, you know, think about it. You didn't have a trust fund? Or no, no, no. <laughs> and I was, um, I was like, well, what can I do that's creative, you know, so creative? and it uses a lot of the same skills, but it has like a solid industry. There's yeah. solid work in it. And there's yeah, like yeah. tons of, and at that point, um, animation was like blowing up, especially in the Bay Area. As soon as I graduated, I was, you know, looking for work, as everybody is. I got this job at a, uh, like this animate, like not animation, but a um, video game company in um, North San Francisco, the Stepping Stone. I just need to go somewhere to like get in, get yeah, in you know? yeah. And um, so I was there for like a year and a half, and then I went to go work at a company called Tippett Studio in back in Berkeley. <laughs> so I was like back to the same town that I started nice. it. And I kept in touch with them, and then it, and then it turned out he was working on Avatar. Like, you know, can you hook me? Can you get me? I want to come down. Um, showed up, and you know. Ended up staying there for four years. And at that point, after four years and stuff, the part my my girlfriend at the time, my partner at the time, and I just felt like we really wanted to move back to the states. Yeah. When you transitioned to that world, though, like that was um, that must have been like an incredible sacrifice for you. Yeah, like, it was. It was a hard. It was like because you had like basically you have a nine to five job. Yeah. You have the secure financial security. Yeah. And now you're you're just gonna throw that all away to uh, start making art. Yep. Yeah. And um, you know, I mean, it was it was stressful in a way and kind of scary, right? right? But I figured the only thing that was really holding me back was my fear of it, right? Yeah. It's like just I'm only the only reason I'm not doing it is because I'm afraid of what 
could go wrong. You know, it was a little early for me, but at the time I was I was not happy with my job, and yeah. I was like, you know, I'm not exactly in the right place, but I'm just gonna have to jump anyway, yeah. you know, because I need to do it now. I at that point I was I hated my job, and I was you know I just wanted to get out of there, yeah. and so um, just jump. I just did it. You know, just jump. Sometimes you just gotta push yourself. It's like standing on the edge of the bridge when you're gonna jump, right? Or like yeah. bungee yeah. jumping, you're gonna go cliff diving or something. And it's hard to push yourself over that edge, right? To just like push your body past what it thinks it's you know capable of, or, or you're afraid to do, really, right? Or fear. Now, do you feel like it was worth it? In some ways, yeah. I mean, sometimes it's hard, man. Like, <laughs> it's not a lie. You know, too, that it's real tough to. Um, and like, I think. Sorry, why the fuck did I do this? Yeah, why did I do this? You know, that's one of the problems I think people don't understand is like. You know, the arts have to be supported. Yeah. I mean, it's like, if, you don't, if you're not going to buy art, even just, it doesn't have to be super expensive, no. but even little things, I yeah. mean, they, they have to be supported or else it's going to go away. And then what else do yeah. you have? You know? And you're just going to be bored all the time. It's really like, <laughs> it's really the thing that, you know, I was talking about this with somebody recently, and I was saying, that, like, nobody needs art. Mm. Like, it's, you don't need it it's to useless. live. Yeah, you don't need it to live, you don't need it to put, I mean, but it's what makes us human, though. Right. And it's, and it's like having a shared experience. It's just, um, so now, what do you, like, a lot of your imagery is figuratively based. Yeah. And it looks like it's based on, um, like, mythology and, yeah. um, I don't know, it's very mysterious in a lot of ways. Yes, yeah. yeah. Round ones, like, exactly. Persephone, you know, so sorry, Persephone, and you know, she's the um, figurative representation of a force of nature, yeah. right? Yeah. So, you know, and that force of nature is an eternal force. It existed before people. It will exist, exist after people. It's, people have the ability to perceive, right? To, and to figure, and to put it into a figurative realm. Yeah. So. I like things like that that have an eternal quality to them that exist outside of humanity or whatever, yeah. but are definitely brought to the surface by humanity. It's kind of interesting because within your with your work within the portrait, I mean, like you said, like you can tell a story just by an expression. Right. And yeah. And it's really fascinating, like, if you really, if you really break it down, it's kind of like, like you said, we can't, we don't always understand what we're looking at, yeah. but we have, we have a feeling associated yeah, with that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, or, you know when you're talking to somebody and you get a weird feeling about them? Yeah. It's not just, it's not some vibrational thing that you're picking up, you're reading their face, and it's, you're reading their face in a subconscious manner, and you're comparing it against your database of acceptable facial expressions that you've yeah. learned across your entire life. And you're going, oh, are they telling the truth? Are yeah, they lying? Yeah, yeah. Are they being nice? Are they hiding something? Like, it's this, it's, you know, it gets, it's super complex. But so is this the kind of stuff you want to play around with? Yeah, I mean, I play around with that stuff. I use it more to, like, as inspiration, as input into what I'm doing, you know? Yeah. I, um, I don't necessarily mess around with the, that level of facial stuff that's more like for animation thing. Yeah. But where I was leading with it was that I had been so focused on facial stuff and I am still focused on facial stuff, but I wanted to do a really large portrait. So I was I knew I wanted to jump into working at you know at figurative stuff. I knew I wanted to be focused on the human face, the human form. Um, my personal opinion is that hands are the, the most expression, yeah. uh, that they represent the most expression on the body after the face. So, Absolutely. the face, you know, you give most of your signs through the face, but then, like me, I just constantly talk about <laughs> hands. Um, your hands are definitely your second most expressive feature. Absolutely. And um, you think about the tradition, and especially in. Within Renaissance oh, yeah. tradition of using hand gestures to express something. Oh yeah, and some of those are lost to us too. Yeah, you know? yeah, we don't understand what they mean. Exactly. Like that. I mean, yeah, they all it was like it's like a secret code kind of thing. Yeah, um, 
you know, and that's in Buddhism too, like my father's work. He, um, you know, there's all these different hand things that they put into their artwork. I knew that, yeah, so I knew I wanted to do a really large portrait and I wanted to include hands somehow. Yeah. And, um, and I was, you know, I was, at that point, I was trying to like make my initial go, like when you start a race or whatever, right? You want to come out strong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, um, I was like, I, I want to go big. And I, so I'm like, I'm trying to like get, I'm trying to get myself known, trying to get out there, trying to prove myself, trying to do all those things, you know, that um, I'm way behind on because I spent my first ten years doing a completely different career path. Sort of recently in this last year or so, I think people are starting to realize like, oh yeah, this guy's been around. He's just doing his stuff. He's good. He's Consistent. He's making stuff. You know, he's responsible. Yeah. He's like, you know, he's really trying to make a go of it. It's not just, it's not just a win or whatever. Yeah. So, well, your work is fantastic, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I think. Thanks for talking to me. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for doing the interview. It's fun. <laughs> I mean, you know, I like it. I like to be able to get out there and uh, any any chance of reaching more people.